and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this beautiful day that God has given us for worship and prayer and celebration and singing together. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, our staff, and all the people who are helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so excited that you are joining together in this time. And we want to extend a special welcome to any new folks. If this is your first time joining with us for worship online with Douglas Avenue, wow. We are thrilled and honored that you have picked Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here. I want to encourage you and everyone to fill out our contact form. It is pinned right in the comment section of the worship video here. And this is a way that we can get connected together. Fill out your name there, some contact information. It's also a way for you to share prayers that we can hold for you with our prayer team and with our pastors. That's right on that contact form. And it's just a way that we'll be able to offer to you all the different ways that we are together and serving and worshiping and growing in faith online and in other ways throughout our community. So please use that contact form today. I also want to remind you that when we're worshiping online together, we covenant to participate and to be a blessing. And that means we're gonna participate fully in this time. When it's time to pray, please pray. When we stand up and sing, go ahead and stand up and sing. Get in close so you can hear and be a part of everything and fully participate as God is calling you today. Put things into the comment section. Again, fill out that contact form and fully participate. And then we covenant to be a blessing as well. This means that all the things that we share, the way we comment with one another in the comments, the way that we're participating with the folks in our household right now, with folks in the community, that all of that is gonna be a blessing in the way we speak, in our attitude, and in our comments. So we covenant together to fully participate and to be a blessing. Good morning, church. It is now the time in our worship service where we share the peace of Christ with each other. We're gonna do that here on this call. And then when we are done, we do encourage you, if there's somebody with you um, watching worship, that you turn to them and share the peace of Christ with them as well. Doreen, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you, Margaret Ann. To my dear friend, Diana Heberlin, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you, Nancy. Tiny, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you, Diana. Sue, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you, Cameo. Hi, we're Floyd and Bobby Blackard. You haven't seen us for a while because uh, the bishop has appointed us to Riverton and Bissell United Methodist Churches just northeast of Springfield. Please receive this call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. God's love and mercy is given daily for each of us. God's forgiveness and tenderness are poured out for us. Let's give thanks to God who deals so kindly with us. Let's offer the same kind of love and compassion to others. Thank, Thank you, God, God for, for forgiveness, forgiveness, love, and, and compassion. compassion. Amen. Hi, I'm Alan Griffey. I sing in the praise band, and I'm also chair of the Ad Council here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please stand and join us as we sing, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just, by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory, great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice, now lift up your voice. Great 
is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. He is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of glory. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It is time for small talk. So kids, get in close so that you can see and hear everything that's going on with small talk. It is led by Miss Laurie, our Minister of Children's Ministries and Youth here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and of course, Laud the Lamb and his assistant. So get in close for small talk. And then we'll also be sharing with you a little bit more information about Celebrate Wonder, our at-home online faith learning activity and worship series for people of all ages that's beginning right now. We have our Celebrate Wonder Launch Party on Sunday from 3 to 5. We'll hope you join with us for that. So get in close. We're here for Small Talk and our intro to Celebrate Wonder. Good morning, everybody. Laud and I have a very special announcement for you this morning. So today kicks off our brand new... Sunday School Adult Activity Time. We had a great time over the summer with all of our activities and we're starting something new. It is called Celebrate Wonder. And you're getting ready to watch a short video about it. But we're kicking it off today from three to five at the church outside in the back parking lot. You can come do a couple of really fun, maybe a little bit messy activities and pick up your kit for this next session right here, as Lot is demonstrating, and a goodie bag. So can't wait to see you this afternoon. Come and join us. Bye, guys. Hi, I'm Samuel. And I'm Abigail. Welcome, Welcome to, to Celebrate, Celebrate Wonder. Wonder. We are two of your guides as we wonder together about the Bible. Wonder? What's that? Well, that's a good question. Wonder means we're going to be curious, surprised, and amazed by God and the world around us. You're going to explore our faith together. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to share stories with you and celebrate all the things you're going to learn. I wonder, are you excited? Now it's your turn to wonder. Good morning. My name is Scott Smith, and I am a member of the Chancel Choir. Today's reading of the Bible comes from the 16th chapter of Exodus. God has led the Israelites, God's people, out of slavery in Egypt and into the desert journey toward the Promised Land. But it was taking a while, and the people were complaining a lot. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this story. The whole Israelite community complained against Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, Oh, how we wish that the Lord had just put us to death while we are still in the land of Egypt. There we could sit by the pots, cooking meat, and eat our fill of bread. 
Instead, you have brought us out into the desert to starve this whole assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to make bread rain down from the sky for you. The people will go out each day and gather just enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them to see whether or not they follow my instructions. On the sixth day, when they measure out what they have collected, it will be twice as much as they collected on other days. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole Israelite community, Come near to the Lord, because he has heard your complaints. As Aaron spoke to the whole Israelite community, they turned to look toward the desert, and just then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, I have heard the complaints of the Israelites. Tell them, At twilight you will eat meat. In the morning you will have your fill of bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening a flock of quail flew down and covered the camp. In the morning there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the desert surface were thin flakes, as thin as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is this? They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible story we have received today. Amen. Please join us in singing, God Will Take Care of You. Not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you, God will take care of you. All you may need He will provide, God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. I love getting to be a part of faith development with children, journeying alongside them as they're growing in faith and their love of God and their service in the world. And one of my favorite things about uh, coming to serve along with you all at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is getting to sing with our youngest children with the Allelu Choir. That's been just so much fun. And I'm really looking forward to our Celebrate Wonder Sunday School. This is our fall installment of at home and online intergenerational faith building and activities and prayer and worship. And I hope that you will make a point of coming by on Sunday afternoon, the parking lot at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church between the hours of 3 and 5 p.m. Wear your mask and you can enjoy just a few moments of some safe activities and you can pick up your activity kit for Celebrate Wonder. So come join us for that. One of uh, the great things about being a pastor 
is when young kids get to see you outside of the church building for the first time, particularly those kids who are in the ages of two to four years old. I was in the grocery store and ran into one of our moms with a young child. We said hi, we talked for just a couple of minutes, and I loved hearing from this youngster about the book they were reading and, and little things that were going on in their lives. Later that afternoon, the mom sent me an email to say, after seeing you in the grocery store, my baby turned to me with big eyes and said, we just saw God in the grocery store. Oh my gosh, I laughed so hard till I cried and the email conversation that ensued from that was hysterical. Now, this is a fairly common developmental stage for young children when they uh, confuse an adult's role with their identity. And they do the same thing to teachers and are surprised to find them in the grocery store or the gas station or walking down their street. They're like, I know that person, but they are in the wrong place. And I was just not expecting to see them right here. It's both disorienting and an opportunity for growth. A lot of us are finding ourselves in a similar place during this COVID-19 pandemic and the long journey we are on through it. We find ourselves disoriented, but we are still discovering God's presence in some unanticipated places. One of the unanticipated blessings of our COVID-19 pandemic journey is in being released from the church building a bit more. The expectation of the experience of church only happening in that one place, well, the tightness of that grip has loosened. All for the strengthening, I believe, of our faith. It's provided opportunity for a deeper engagement with God in the midst of our everyday lives. It's an unexpected blessing, not really anticipated as we headed out into this journey of being church during the COVID-19 pandemic, continuing to grow and nurture faith and reaching out in profound service to the community. Our story from the Bible that Scott shared with us is certainly one of unanticipated blessing, or maybe better stated, unimagined blessing. The story of the Israelites, the Hebrew people's migration through the desert is a little bit like our journey today. How do we find God's presence in new ways and in unexpected places? How do we trust God to provide when our customs, traditions, and preferences have been upended? How do we find a new way to be God's people in a new world? How is God blessing us, guiding us, and calling us into new ways of faithfulness, discipleship, and justice making? The Hebrew people had just been freed from slavery in Egypt through powerful, mighty acts of God. And they were on their way with God's leading toward their new life in the promised land. They hadn't been at it very long before they began to complain. A lot. They complained about the traveling conditions, about what they didn't have, about what they used to have, about their leaders. They accused Moses and Aaron of trying to kill them in the desert by starving them to death. They even expressed a longing to return to the brutal death-dealing slavery of Egypt where, in their minds, at least there was plenty of food. They're struggling. They are afraid. They're not seeing a way through. They are not taking heart in the blessings God had already provided to them during this in-between desert traveling that they were only just getting started on. They struggle to entrust their lives to God who had set them free and had been providing for them over and over and over. I think so many of us can absolutely identify with the Hebrew people in their worry, in their complaining, in their struggling, in their fear, in their despondency. What we hear in our Bible story today is God responding with grace and love and provision. God meets the people's doubt, their complaining, their fear, with a plan to provide sustenance and hope. A bread-like substance will appear every morning and last 
one day, except on Fridays, when enough will also appear to last through the Sabbath. And they're to collect that. In addition to the bread-like substance, the Hebrew people will also receive meat in the evening, each evening, as quail will descend upon their camp. God promises to provide plenty of food for the people, again proving God's trustworthiness, faithfulness, and devotion to them. This is in direct contrast to the bread of affliction and death dealt by Pharaoh in Egypt, where the people had expressed a longing to return in their complaints. God turns their journey in a wilderness desert of complaint and fear to a journey into a new and unknown place, rich in provision and dependency upon their loving and faithful God. All the, the complaints and fear of the unknown, of the length of the journey, those will come back. And we surely see that throughout the Exodus story. But we also continue to see and experience the provision of God. The bread from heaven that God is providing to the Hebrew people is called manna, manhu in Hebrew, which is named for the question they ask about it. What is it? Manhu, what is it? And Moses, their leader, responds to them, Manhu, this is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Basically the question, Manhu, what is it? And the response, Manhu, it is what it is, God's provision. I believe manna though is also interesting because of what it is not. In response to the prayers and worries and complaints of the Hebrews wandering through the desert, God sends manna and quail. But God does not send them a map with the quickest routes or magically transport them en masse into the promised land. There's no sci-fi portal uh, or transporter that beams them through the desert and cuts their journey short. Instead, God sends them different gifts. Moses, Aaron, Miriam, their leaders. A pillar of fire and smoke as guidance. The promise of divine relationship in the law of the covenant, the company of one another, the gift of sustenance through manna and quail. How is God gifting us with sustenance through our journey today? For some people, COVID-19 is a struggle. We are all on the same journey right now, but it is very clear that we don't all have the same resources in our packs to make this trip. While we're doing a lot as a church, as individuals, to share resources and support one another and our community, some people are still struggling and calling out to God. Where is God and what's going on with me, our community, our world right now? Where's the help while I'm struggling emotionally and spiritually, while I'm struggling with job loss, trying to keep a roof over my family's head, food on the table? What's the provision while I'm struggling with kids schooling at home, me working at home and away from home, and all of it combined all the time? While I'm struggling with sobriety, while I'm on the slippery slope of mental health, what gifts is God sending us to sustain our lives during this journey. What's the manna in our deserts? What is it? I want you to take a moment to think and reflect on that right now. What has already been manna for you during this journey? What has sustained you? If you'd like Go ahead and post about that in our comment section or say aloud with me a prayer. Thank you, God, for that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for that has sustained me. That, that might be small things like, thank you, God, for sitting on my front porch that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for homemade banana bread that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for that telephone call which has sustained me. 
Thank you, God, for funny TikTok and baby hippo videos that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for the birds singing in the trees that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for taking a walk in the cool of the morning that has sustained me. It might be larger things like, thank you, God, for my online Bible study, that, that group of people that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for the rehab stay that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for the connection with estranged family that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for the employment that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for the health care that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for the opportunities to serve others that has sustained me. Thank you, God, for my church family that has sustained me. And on and on and on. As a church, we've been continuing to give thanks for and participate with God's sustenance during this journey. As you know, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church did not close and has not closed during this pandemic journey. Some of the manna that we've been able to partner with God in providing includes online worship and groups and live casts and conversations online prayer and so much other ways of praying and being in prayer on and on in prayer together online at-home faith activities for kids and people of all ages small group opportunities to serve with food banks and the micro pantry and wouldn't it be lovely and compass for kids hard conversations and work in anti-racism putting our facility fully to work in supporting life-transforming community ministry, opportunities abounding in generosity, in financial giving, in blessing, in serving, in relationship building, in connecting with new people and with more. I am so proud to be a part of a church that knows that church is not a building, that we are sustained as the body of Christ in so many ways and that we can offer that manna in so many ways to one another and in our community. We already know that this journey is long, that it's taking longer than we anticipated and it will take longer, which means our faithful, loving, providing God will continue to offer more manna and more opportunities to partner with God in sharing manna. So what is it? And our answer with Moses and Aaron and Miriam, with the prophets, with Jesus, with the church universal, it is the life-giving sustenance of God. Amen. As we go into a time of prayer, please join members of our praise band in singing Enough. It's more than enough. 
my name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the Associate Pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is now the time in our worship service where we all try to just take a deep breath and clear our minds, and we go to God in prayer. And I will be giving this prayer at our family farm um, behind a field that will be harvested soon. It just felt appropriate as we talked about how God provides us with manna and how he provided for the Israelites so long ago. And he continues to provide to us, um, gives us nourishments for our soul and food for our bodies. So I invite you now to close your eyes and you join me in prayer. Oh, gracious and most loving God, we come to you again on this Sunday morning, drawing on your strength. It has been a long week for many, oh God, as we recognize the anniversary of the 9-11 tragedy, as forest fires continue to burn in the West, and there are those still recovering from damages from hurricane, and we still have the coronavirus that is affecting so much of our daily lives. Oh God, we do need your strength and your nourishment, but we are so grateful for the reassurance that you are with us each and every day, that you provide us with the food that we need. Oh God, we come to you asking you to be with those that have special needs, especially this week again, we pray for the teachers and our education system and the parents and the students. It has been a long and challenging few weeks for many, and we just ask you to continue to feed them and give them the nourishment that they need. We pray, oh God, for all those that are affected by the coronavirus, for all of the different changes that have gone on in so many lives, those that are struggling and ill, our healthcare providers that continue to care for them. We just ask you to draw near to each of us and give us the strength and the nourishment that we need to continue. We pray, O oh God, for those that are sick with any illness, those that are grieving, those that are having trouble with addictions, that this is such a difficult time. Give those that are feeling anxious and depressed, give them the strength that they need to carry on. And help us, O oh God, to recognize the places that we can be your hands and feet, and we can provide food for those that need it. Oh God, we pray so much for our church, for the ministries that go on within our congregation. We ask that you continue to be with each and every one of them. There's so many in our congregation, oh God, that do so much for your glory. We ask that you continue to strengthen those and bring more to, to the ministries of our wonderful church. And oh God, we do pray for our denomination for those that make leadership decisions, that you continue to empower them. And as decisions are made for all of our safety and the well-being for each of us. We pray for our world, oh God. I had mentioned many places that need you, that are drawing on you, that you are present. We ask that you open up each of our hearts and that we can see all of the places that you are present that you are in the midst of all of the devastation and all of these places. Oh God, we just ask you to continue to strengthen us in our racial and our political divide. May we all look at these issues with an open heart and look through the eyes of love. Oh God, we come to you now in a time of silence and we ask you, oh God, to listen to each of our individual prayers as we come to you now. And God, it is with gratitude that we say the prayer that you taught us to pray. Gratitude that you walk with us, that you feed us in nourishment and give us the nourishment that we need. So together we will say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Generosity is such an incredible way that we partner with God in providing manna in this journey. 
those financial gifts and offerings and tithes that you send send in make sure that the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church are powerful and strong and reaching beyond what we might well have imagined online and into our community and into our world. I encourage you to continue to give your financial gifts. You can do that through our online giving portal. The link is pinned right in the comment section to do that and you can access it on our webpage to set up um, an automatic giving with your financial institution to send up automatic giving giving through the church office at Douglas Avenue. You can just call us for that information to go ahead and mail in your checks to the office at Douglas Avenue. All of those gifts are making a huge difference right now in the ministries that we are able to do together. I want to encourage you also to participate in our special giving blessing that we're continuing to do with Du Bois Elementary School. We are providing them with computer headsets for the children there to use for their at-home and online learning. It's making a huge difference in the way the kids are able to participate in their online learning. We're still trying to fully fund those headsets, the 250 that we are providing to them. They cost $14 a kid and we're sending 250. So please, if you have not already done so, please give to that offering. You can access it right online through the giving portal, through their special offering click down menu. You can send in your checks to Douglas Avenue, just marked with a Du Bois blessing in the memo line. If you've already given, consider giving again so that we can fully fund this blessing and continue to send those headsets right onto Du Bois Elementary School. And now we're gonna receive an offering uh, to each one of us. It's a mission moment that is going to be given to us by Becca Philbrick, Be Becca Philbrick about the upcoming crop walk. Hi, I'm Becca Philbrick. I'm the Director of Music and Ministries at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And so you usually see me doing something musical, but this time I'm here to talk to you about the crop walk. The Crop Walk is an important event that we do every single year that raises money for people that are hungry, people that have less than what we have. And I'm very passionate about making sure that we get this food to people that need it. This year's walk is obviously going to be a little bit different because usually a whole bunch of churches come together to make this walk happen. Well, we can't have all those churches together this year. So this year we're going to be doing a virtual walk. This means that we're going to be raising money online mostly, and then walking on our own time. So for example, my family is probably going to be doing our walk on the trail. You can do it anywhere you want at any time you want, as long as it's done by the first Sunday in October. So what I'm asking you to do today is if you're interested, please consider joining to be a walker in this, in this wonderful event. You can do this by going to crophungerwalk.org slash springfieldil. At this website, you can sign up to walk and you can also sign up to donate. This is a great place to get your donations in since we're not together at church to be able to get donations at church. If you would please go online to give your donations, that would be wonderful. If you want to search for a walker to donate to, you can search for any walker that you know is participating. If you'd like to, to donate to my walk, just search for Becca Philbrick and you can donate to my walk there again. Once again, the website for this is crophungerwalk.org slash Springfield IL. I hope that you will join me in either walking or by donating to this wonderful cause. Please stand and join us in our closing song, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
strength and shield, strength and shield, be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, lend me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee, give to thee, I will ever give to thee. Thank you so much for joining in online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I pray that this experience has been manna for you on your faith journey and that you will continue to join with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in online worship, in our online small groups, in the opportunities for, to serve in our community that we have, in so many ways to connect and pray with one another and grow in faith together. Remember to fill out that contact form that's pinned in the comments section so that we can connect with you and be in ministry with you in all of these various ways. And now as you go into the rest of your day, go knowing that God loves you and provides for you in this journey of faith. That Jesus Christ goes with you, saves you, loves you each and every day. And that the Holy Spirit empowers you to not only receive the manna that God provides, but to provide that manna for others along the way. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. <laughs>